It is a stunning late winter day in our timber frame home. We've been building this home for a few years now. It's a three-story timber frame that we saw milled ourselves. We bought a sawmill because we wanted to mill our own beams and posts for the house. We also wanted to learn to convert easily available raw materials into value by using our labor instead of money to pay for them. Five boards to go. How's it feel? Good. Yeah? I just milled our entire loft, loft deck. floor on my own. Our goal with this home has been to do it without incurring debt, which means we've had to do the vast majority of the work ourselves and find creative ways to do things. Something we didn't really see coming as we milled up this huge timber frame was the sheer amount of excess lumber, cants, and firewood that we would produce. My, my, my. That's some nice wood. What a nice wood pile you got there. For milling the logs for our frame, we created a lot of firewood, but I just couldn't bring myself to burn some of this stuff. My thinking was if it's at least a two by eight or larger, uh, that's worth keeping. Anything two by eight or less, like two by six, two by four, it's just not profitable for us to go through all the effort. So as I was going, if I could see that I would get a board inch and a half by two by 10 or whatever. I would just cut it, slab it, and then everybody helped and to get it stickered. We didn't know what we would even use it for. It just seemed terrible to throw it all away. Honestly, we were super ill prepared. We started out with this really cute firewood pile that turned into an absolute monster by the time we were done. It turns out when you sawmill 55 logs and just extract the beams and the posts inside the log, you have a lot of wood left over that could be waste or could be very valuable. Because we had a hard deadline to meet, we were under the gun to get the timber frame milled and we didn't want to fuss with anything extracurricular. As we were making the beams and posts and began getting comfortable with the sawmill, we noticed that there was so much amazing and valuable lumber that could be saved and maybe used for something later. Trying to find the balance between hitting our deadline and maximizing our logs, we compromised by basically asking, okay, so what's the beam that we can get from this log? And then we'd work backwards to produce whatever lumber we could. We stickered all these super long, kind of wobbly, but amazing and beautiful boards out of the way, knowing that we would need decking for our loft for the future timber frame. Seems almost just saddening to cut all this stuff up into six inch lumber. The whole reason we saved it all was because it was like 10 plus inch Right, which makes it really That's valuable. That's the thing, is that you don't know what you're gonna use it for. You have no idea. True, you could sit so. here for five years looking for a project. After the timber frame was up and we had some time, we really took a hard look at what our lumber needs would be to properly floor over the loft area. I don't have a lot of experience or any experience laying flooring, but Jesse said that we really wanna think about the pattern that we're creating. You either wanna create a pattern that makes sense by the way you lay out the lumber or you want to go with no pattern and kind of go for that random look so if we really wanted to be random we could go with three foot pieces and just shuffle them up therefore your eye doesn't pick up on any pattern it's all random and all looks good you see we didn't plan on using this for that and so we were worried that maybe we just didn't have enough kind of a tragedy to have all this beautiful lumber and then come up short we knew based on our measurements it was going to be pretty tight but we thought if we use some real creativity, we would probably have enough, but there certainly wouldn't be much extra. So we started into the stacks of boards we'd stickered and started cutting in lengths of three feet, since that's the spacing of our loft joists. Our thinking was nine and 12 were good multiples. They allowed us to have as little waste as possible while having a variety of lengths. By cutting a 12 foot board in half, we'd have a six foot board. First, we'd cross cut the boards using a circular saw, and then we put them on the sawmill and resawed them into the appropriate width. We sort of got lucky because when you rough saw something that you plan to shape and plane later, you usually oversaw by about a half an inch in all directions, but we had only oversawn by a quarter of an inch. 
So we worked hard building up a large unit of lumber, which was stickered with a one inch sticker to give the lumber room to breathe in the kiln. Nice work getting backed up in here. Not bad. Beast backup mode. Backup cam helps. Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't tell them about the backup cam. <laughs> Once we had a large unit, we delivered it to a nearby sawmill, which operates a kiln and offered a four side planer service, a one stop shop in this case. This lumber was cut from logs that were in the forest only a few days before, and they had been sitting unprotected out in the weather. So they had a very high moisture content. They placed this first unit into the kiln for a couple of weeks to bring the moisture content down, which is important for both wood stability as well as proper operation of the planer. We went back to work to get another unit ready for them, and then that was also placed in the kiln. This was super exciting to us because we had not planned on having all this extra lumber that we could simply do a little more work and turn it into something absolutely beautiful. We had run the calculations and at the time we expected this to cost maybe around $800, including the kiln and the shaping. If we were to purchase this material, the cost was well in excess of $2,000. So for a couple of days of our time spent with the sawmill, we were looking at a really big savings. After a couple of weeks, we got a call from the sawmill and our order was ready. It was almost shocking to see that our two units had lost a lot of weight and become just one unit. Of course, all the stickers had been removed and every single board had lost a substantial amount of thickness. And just like that, what was not long ago, a massive log coming out of the forest to give its life to become our beautiful timber frame was now also beautiful tongue and groove lumber for our home. As it worked out, those darn boards would sit in our future dining room for a few years as we worked on far more urgent projects like getting the walls up, the roof on, windows and doors installed, and connecting the house to a well and natural gas. It was amazing to see the lumber after all those years as we disassembled the unit board by board and began building the loft decking. Every day when we look up, we have a lot of pride. Not just in the timber frame, which is beautiful, but also at the beautiful lumber that now makes up the ceiling of our home. We took a lot of extra care in selecting the boards and doing the layout in the loft because, well, we're going to look at these boards for a really long time, and so we wanted them to look really good. We are really glad that we took this project on. We didn't know if it would work out when we started, but it sure did. This home isn't just a bunch of materials that came from a lumber yard and somebody stuck up because it's their nine to five job. It represents a lot of hard work, risk taking and ingenuity. That means these boards might look like other tongue and groove boards, but what makes them different is the story. All along, our goal to build this home debt free means we're having to look under rocks and challenge ideas to make it happen. If you enjoyed this video and want to follow the debt-free dream home build, join us on Kerf, where we're documenting the build from the very beginning.